It's debatable whether I should really try to uh, maybe... I mean, this is where the wet palette's really going to come in handy, but it's debatable whether I should try to... there's a better way that I can really kind of get that camera in here. It feels like it's it may not be maybe if I do like this something like that.
think the nice thing about the the secret weapon uh, terrain is it's just a lot of little details in it. Like Dwarven Forge st stuff has gotten a lot better over the years, but I'm noticing as I look through this stuff compared to Dwarven Forge, there's just a lot of little character things that they did. Uh, whereas the Dwarven Forge stuff is a little bit more. Um, it's it's more like kind of normalized. But then again, I've got, you know, like seven times as much Dwarven Forge stuff as I do have anything else. So, I mean, eventually, like, yeah, if you look at the same piece a certain number of times, like if I had, you know, 200 of these, then yeah, they would all look the same too. And I wouldn't probably feel as, as uh, good about the detail work. I think there's a face in this rock, which is kind of neat. I mean, this isn't really this is a game piece in this in the fat in the sense that it's going to control what, the way the board looks and where you can go, but it's not a game piece that you're going to handle that often and move around. You know, you're not going to feel like. There's not a lot of character that you're going to associate with it, but it has a lot of character within it itself, if that makes any sense. I mean, when you put a face in rocks, I guess that means that there's character, right? Just kind of dousing this thing with the red, making sure we hit all those little gray spots. sure what color they want this little brace in the corner to be this guy I'm really not sure I think I'm gonna just do it in black and then accent it with some uh, some metal I'm not really hitting these wood beams because we're gonna hit that with our wood color a little later seems pretty good though I think I got most all of it. Yeah, I think we're ready to dry brush. All right, so we're going to clean out this brush. Maybe take a drink off our beer. Close up our red. Slayer orange. We also have a yellow here we could use to maybe mix in. I think these oranges are going to be still good. And we got a lot of orange here. 
It's a classic. Uh, Dry brushing brush that's okay. Maybe this one will be okay, I think. Alright, let's see what we've got. This is the new one. Let's see if these are good or bad. This one feels like it might be okay. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Alright, so we've got that one. Is our base pretty good? Really. Okay, we're gonna toss that one. How about this one? Is this this one is also pretty good. So we actually have a lot of Troll Slayer Orange, which is ready to go. So I actually did not need to buy Troll Slayer Orange. I should have looked at my, my uh, stuff a little bit better. But hey, we've got a lot of orange to paint, so it's gonna be dry brushed. So the dry brushing instead of the wet brushing, in fact, I'll just close this up because we're not using it right now. To keep, it'll keep that, that paint wet. We're going to clean off most of the paint. And then we're just going to kind of hit the model with that, and it's going to hit all the high points on there. And just kind of bring out that, uh, that detail. So you can kind of see, or maybe you can or can't. Kind of hard to see, but yeah, the details kind of coming out there. So we hit those rocks, so all those low points where it's nice and red should stay red. And then we can kind of get that orange, red rock kind of a look here. This is really what we're going for. And then it's going to be made a little bit better when we uh, hit it with our Nolan oil at the end. It's going to darken things up quite a bit. It's just a lot of area to cover to dry brush here, so this is going to take a little bit. Headset has a thing where it shuts off if it thinks that there's no sound coming to try to save power in case you leave it on. So it's, it's trying to save its batteries because, you know, once the batteries go, I'm going to have to buy a whole new headset. There's no way to replace batteries in these things, which is appreciated. But when I'm talking through the mic, it also will still shut off because I'm not sending, I'm not getting any sound through the headphones. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's just one more reason to have the classical music running. But I think it is helping me, you know, focus a little bit. Gives me some nice background, you know. Yeah, I'm a big electronica fan, but this is, is kind of nice. It's a nice change of pace. I haven't listened to classical music in a long time. I saw today that it looks like uh, they may be rebooting Star Wars completely with like new actors and stuff. They may be starting from like A New Hope or something. I don't know, doing something. And that's how bad Episode Eight has gotten. It's kind of it's interesting because there's just a lot of people that are not happy. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I am one of them, but. Uh, I guess it's good. It's it's good that they're they're listening to the fans and they understand, you know, the bottom line and and basically that a lot of fans are threatening a boycott of episode 9 and, and they will follow through with it. 
I think the only way I would watch it is if it was on Netflix at this point, personally, because the last one was just such a, uh, not a great movie, you know? I think I was just very confused by what I was seeing. when I watched it. But later on, as I uh, started to get the reviews and other things, it started to make sense what happened with the uh, direction and the things that people decided that, you know, were more important than, uh, you know, telling a good story. Also, this week, one of the things that was kind of interesting to me was, um, I guess there was a there was a video that was put out about a guy that did a PC build and he did it all wrong, and then they get they took it down. And the funny thing to me is, it's like it was like all the normal news outlets, the YouTuber outlets, they hit that as hard as they could because they knew it was views. And I don't know. I guess that's what you do if you're a news outlet YouTube person. Everybody hit it. And it was it was funny to hear some of the things, but eventually it just, yeah, you can only watch it so many times. They scrutinized that guy pretty hard, though, so hopefully he's doing okay. Like maybe maybe a little bit excessive with the scrutiniz scrutinization. Like I just don't know what it would be like at this point in my life if I actually got popular enough that I, people like looked at what I did and they were like scrutinizing every little thing. I've been scrutinized before. But all that happened was someone's like, I don't like you, so I'm unsubscribing. You know, that was all that really came from it. So, I mean, that does hurt a little bit, I guess. Um, but you also can't please everyone. And there's only so much you can do. And then I see people that are more popular that basically get away with the same stuff that uh, people didn't like about my channel, so it makes me feel like eh, it wasn't that big of a deal. Basically, the complaint was that you could hear children in the background of the video or whatever, you know, screaming or this and that, and I've seen plenty of other people on their live streams and stuff that have had same issues, really, you know, and that's like, if you're going to do it during the daytime, it's basically unavoidable, especially when you're not getting the support that you need from your uh, significant other. Which I wasn't at the time. I'll tell you, like, after being in front of a screen all week, I think this is just therapeutic at this point. Like, just to put the colors where they're supposed to go. It's kind of like, um, like an adult coloring book in three dimensions, right? Almost. Something like that. As we get these details to come out of here. I think I need to get maybe a better camera though, because I'm sure it's like you can't really see hardly anything with those cameras. The detail just doesn't come through at all. You can't really tell what I'm doing. But you can at least see the methods for what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and maybe I'll take some pictures or something, add them to the back of the video. So this piece actually has some bats on it, which I didn't see before, so that's going to be, those guys will be black and maybe a little bit of gray. 
in there, you know? Like, it's not a bad thing. It's not going to be hard to paint that, but, um, yeah, there's all kinds of little nuances and details that are all over these things. And I think it's going to be really cool because everything is this red and orange and this red rock kind of a thing. And so that stuff's really going to pop out, I think, when I get it. When I get it going. I really think that's going to pop real nice. Hit these grass areas. We're going to hit that with a green later, and then it's going to get its own treatment there. And so it might be hard to tell, but like you can see, maybe side by side. Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell with that. So here's the one I painted. Yeah, that's impossible to see the way that the, the colors hit it, but yeah, you can't really tell the difference from the camera unfortunately but it is different it is better believe me we did all that dry brushing it was not for nothing it was definitely to make a lot of that uh, the colors pop out there quite a bit and it did a pretty good job What I typically do is I'll hit one side and hit the other side, just kind of like each thing to kind of clean that uh, paint off the brush so there's almost nothing left and then, then I can go in and start dry brushing it. So this, mo this piece is the exact same as the one I just painted, so shouldn't be too much of a surprise too many different little surprises in here just gonna make sure I do just as good a job and if I miss a couple things it's okay because we're just dry brushing and it'll just give it a little bit different character the the wash is what's really going to uh, do a lot of work for us as well later on yeah dry brushing the doorway itself really brings out the accents on those uh, the columns because the columns have these dwarven runes on them and so it really brings that out when we hit the those dwarven runes One thing we could do with these faces is we could paint them a little bit different than the walls, but I think I like them being the same stone color as the wall, like they're just part of the wall. The cool thing with these stones too is like you could have them, like let's say you were doing some Dungeons and Dragons or something, you could have those stone faces like talk to the, the players maybe. Maybe like ask them a riddle or something and then they can't pass unless they finish the riddle or... Something like that, you know, something interesting, right? Speaking of Dungeons & Dragons, I saw a thing today where someone was like, what would be a good thing to put in your Dungeons & Dragons binder? And I will say, first of all, you definitely need characters that are already generated, ready to go. Because inevitably, like that's first thing, because inevitably you have someone that shows up, never played Dungeons and Dragons before, heard good things about it, and they want to play, and you don't have time to make a full character in the character generator, unless you're just really that good. But you need to get people into the quest, and so what that means is that you, it's best to just hand them a character, and then if they want, if they like playing the game, then they can make a full character later, you can transfer experience, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, they need to be able to jump right into the game, so you want to have I like to have five on hand uh, when I was running Dungeons and Dragons. And so yeah, I had a bunch of pre-made characters that were just ready to go, and then you, they could throw a name on them, and there you go, you've got a character. 
now you can play them. The trouble comes in a little bit like when you need to get them leveled up a bit, and so like if, you know, having characters I guess at different levels, I guess if you do generate a character, generate all their levels as well, so that way you can hand them a character at any level, or maybe generate every five levels or something, you know, or maybe every third level, so that way you can hand them something that's going to be close to the party's level. just makes those rocks pop out so much. It's just that dry brushing. Because it looks so nice.
Let's see, yeah, we're gonna do some brown in here. Glenn Belcher. Yeah, we have one fang brown, which we're gonna use for all the browns here. Some of the difficulties of painting or doing anything with color is you're colorblind. I'm a little bit colorblind. So it's nice actually having these uh, <laughs> the names on the things. Although, I, I mean, I can see most things most of the time, but sometimes it's just like color confusion. No, I said I was not going to do that. We're actually going to go into our wet palette here. Yeah. There we go. That's going to be nice. And we're just going to hit all of the wood portions. Yeah. Trying not to hit anything else. And we'll probably go with the black next. It's easy to miss things on a model. Try to get it on the first pass, but you know, it just doesn't, things don't always go to plan, right? So we're just going to cover all of these, and that's going to be fine because eventually we're going to hit this with uh, Nolan Oil, and that's going to add in all those little details that we're just kind of covering all with brown right now. And that's okay, as long as we get a nice even brown coat over everything, over all these wood areas. Now we might dry brush some uh, flesh tone over it just to get a little bit of accent on the wood like we did last week. I think that's going to be helpful as well to really just kind of bring this out. see it a lot in the uh, camera it looks the accents are a lot different than they are the cameras really just not very good on colors but hey at least you can see that I'm doing things
it's coming along real nice there. Light on this archway is tougher. Kind of awkward in the middle of this archway. Luckily, no one's going to be looking in there very much. But the, uh, the way I have to paint this is just a little bit awkward. There's not really a great transition from the, the frame to the, the rock in there. But overall, I think it's okay. It's just not optimal for what I would have liked to have seen. Bats brown, which I guess we could do on one of these. We could have black and gray bats on one and then brown bats on the other one. You know, just to change it up a little. A boo -boo. Hey, what's going on? Oh man, I cannot see that from here. Let me see what you're saying. How's that art, though? It's it's pretty cool, man. Thanks for stopping by, Nexa. I know you're uh, doing a lot of uh, World of Warcraft lately, huh? And I can't see that. Let me change the font size so I can see it from when I'm sitting down here. But yeah, we're, we're working on some dungeon pieces tonight. That's what we're doing. I do appreciate you for stopping by. I'm just going to change this font size. I thought that I'd be able to see it from back there, but I cannot. A flight of the Valkyries here. There we go. How art thou? <laughs> Should be able to see that from back here. Yeah, there we go. Now I can see it. Yeah, we're just working on these. So, so far we've, like, it's kind of hard to see, but like, here's like a regular piece. We had to, it's, there's some gray here because we undercoated this. So you can see the gray at the bottom. That's the normal thing, but we undercoated this in red. Then I painted in the gray with red on both of these. And then I dry brushed it in orange. And uh, now I'm going back and I'm hitting these uh, accents with brown, and so it'll look kind of like this. This guy this is what we're doing. So you can see kind of like on the pick right, right there, we have the, the brown on there. And then eventually we're going to hit it with a wash, and then it'll all look really, really nice. So we've got this wet palette that we just put back together tonight. Basically, it's got water in it, paper towel, and then a, um, 
exactly what they call it. It's basically like cooking paper on top, and then basically we, use, we do that, and it keeps our paints wetter longer, so that way we can paint longer when we have wet paint. And for this one, specifically, like we're just kind of covering these spots, so we want that paint to be pretty well wet. We also need it to be even, so we don't need we need to not glob it on there as well. So we have to be careful of that. There's just a lot of little nuances and things that you learn over the years of painting. You know, it's like any type of art; you get better as you uh, do it. There's a game developer conference thing that I listened to once, where there was a king once, and the king asked. It hit an artist, he said, I would like you to draw me some, uh, some like, uh, like a bird of some sort. Let's say the toucan. I want you to draw me a toucan. And he goes, okay, to, for me to draw you a perfect toucan is going to take me five years. And so the king's like, I don't know, but he goes along with it anyways. So he supports this artist pays for his food, all that stuff. Five years goes by. And he goes to the artist and he's like, hey, where's my toucan? You know, shows up. He expects results, right? Like, you know, people expect results when they pay for things, right? So the artist goes, oh yeah, that. And then he just gets out a piece of paper and he whips one up right there, gives it to the king. And it's like perfect, most immaculate thing you've ever seen. And the king's like, why didn't you just do this for me five years ago? I feel like I've just kind of been swindled, been hoodwinked. And so then the artist goes to a back room and he opens a door and all this paper is back there, right? All this paper is back there and it's just like, just the snout of the toucan. It's the claws of the toucan, just the feathers. You know, lots of mistakes, you know, all these different things. And he had to go through all of those practices and iterations and failures to make the perfect toucan. And that's just kind of how art is. You know, you kind of, there's nothing that's ever going to be perfect. You're just always working on stuff. And the next time you'll just be better than the last time. You learn things along the way. But you also have to just be able to do things quickly and get things where it's just good enough and you kind of ship it as well. Game development's the same way. You know, it's just like, there's never going to be a perfect game. There's just going to be like iterations of games and they just kind of get better over time, you know. I mean, that's why it is that we have like so many Mega Man games, right? Lots of Mega Man games. Well, Lunexa, I think you've already left, but I do appreciate you for stopping by. I do appreciate that. I'm guessing you probably have your own stream you're starting up. some of that off. It's a little bit too much, although it's hard to tell from the camera. 
Always making sure. Lobbing it on there. It's like step one of learning how to paint models. Don't just glob it all on there. Yeah, you know what? I think I will do these bats. We'll do these bats in brown. We'll do some brown bats over here. And then we'll do gray and uh, black bats on the other one. Black for the axe handle, the bats. Maybe the lantern, I could I could do that. And then color some of the rest of it like yellow. Yeah, I could do that. Oh, and then we're going to hit this. Oh, that's a bat up there. Oh. That's what that is. I thought it was like a piece of metal. It's definitely a bat. Oh wow, okay. This thing in the corner. It's kind of hard to see it. It's a bat. Okay, well, that's fine because I'm going to do black on here anyways. You know what, we actually have some wet brown left over so I can actually get that bat on this one where I was going to make all of them brown. So let's do that real quick. buy black and white a lot because you end up using them for everything. So let's see if any of these are still good first. Let's see this one. No, not really. You can't really tell, but it's basically just... It's like a paste in there. It's not really paint. It's basically solidified. It's also basically solidified, so that's also bad. So yeah, it's a good thing I bought black. I went black, I didn't go back. Okay. So 
same thing, we're going to use our wet palette here. So we can get a nice flow. This may have been better for me to have hit it with the the yellow first, but we may not actually hit it with too much yellow anyways. It's going to be interesting for sure. Oh boy, that black just kind of leaked over to where it's not supposed to be over there. Just makes me kind of sad that it's not staying where it's supposed to be. That's just going to make things really frustrating later, but that's okay. We can go back. We can fix that. Sometimes you just can't help it and you need to go back on things to, to kind of tidy them up. That's just the way it is. Things are never going to be the same. That's just the way it is. This bat in the corner is just kind of weird. It's just, it just feels like it's a lot bigger than the other bats. He is swooping in. Yeah, 
I can fix that. The black that leaked over, I can fix that pretty easily, I think. Yeah, those bats in the back, you can hardly tell what they are, but they're there. We'll, we'll, when we dry brush them, they'll look a lot better. We get that gray on them. It's easy to get worried because things don't look quite right when you're just working with something. You don't have all the colors on it, but you'll be surprised when you get all the colors, like how good it does look, finally. Thing. The brown bats look a little bit better just because they're maybe a, the paint was maybe a little bit drier. In fact, I might even just clean some of this off just to try to make sure we don't make the same mistakes as we did on the other model. Yeah, I really should have shut off my phone. It takes a lot of willpower not to pick up a phone when it's buzzing at you. My goodness, that's our society, isn't it? Can I do it for four hours? Can I, can I not touch my phone for four hours? That's a challenge. Don't touch your phone for four hours. It's the four hour phone challenge. it's important to shut it off it probably was less bad when phones were simply for talking to people because you know they didn't ring as often or they didn't buzz at you or do things but like when it's connected to so many things and social media and this and that yeah it's going off all over the place you know it's just very distracting just so many things to distract us and right now the big culprit is the phone and so it says a lot to put it down sometimes. That felt pretty good. So that one, that that lantern's a lot less of a mess than the other one. I mean, we got got a little bit off to the side there, but that's okay. We're gonna we'll, we'll fix that. We'll go back and touch things up before we do our uh, nulling oil. It may be a bad idea to, for me to have my drinking glass so close to my water glasses where I'm cleaning my brushes. Let's see, what's the next color? I think it's going to be the gray. I think we're going to be dry brushing gray here. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be happening. This is just so wet. I think I might just do go back to the brown on here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and dry brush a little bit of gray. And in fact, we might hit some of these runes and stuff as well, just to make them pop out a bit. And we also talked about dry brushing some uh, like skin tone. Maybe I should do that. Maybe we'll do the skin tone over the over the wood greens that might be better for us let's see what kind of skin tone we've got we've got there's a layer here's a baler brown
it now. We are going to fix it. Call on Fix It Felix Jr. from the game. Fix It Felix Jr. The cool thing about painting models in general though is the variance of color that you can get where it's not a lot of flat colors, it's a lot of transitions, different things going on that you get from painting. I'm just kind of working with it, trying to get it to surface something. to another piece to make sure they're fully dry let's say actually yeah, I think that's gonna be the best choice here so I'll probably start working on these corners let's see what time is it it's one of the few things I want to look at my my uh, phone for to see what time it is Ten o'clock, we got two more hours, so I should be able to hit these with a nulling oil. Move on from there. break and I'll be right back. to see if they're how dry they are. I mean this one's ready. I think this one's just gonna be problems all night. I guess we can do it. Alright, well let's start hitting let's hit this one and then we'll see what it does. So I've got no oil here. I've 
got my old Nolan oil up here. I think I have one, maybe one more. Earth shade, and I've got a yeah. So we want to hit it with this one. Don't really need to shake it up. I just kind of used to doing that. Shade brush. I didn't do, I didn't hit the grass parts. So I'm actually gonna stop here. But we do get a kind of a, a see what, what it is. We actually needed to hit the grass portion, so I forgot about that. Let's delay that for a second. But you can kind of get an idea of what's what it's gonna do there. Bring a lot of those details out compared to the other side. Let's get that grass going. It's just every time I hear this now, it's gonna forever remind me of a uh, an anime called uh, Evangelion. Could make the dirt brown, but I want to go with the green grass. So we've got this forest. Here's the old one. Let's see if this one's any good anymore. Probably not. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's all water, so we're going to go with the new one. Same thing, we're going to use our wet palette here because we just kind of need to cover the areas completely. This will darken up as soon as we hit it with the uh, the Nolan oil. It's going to be okay for us to do this because we're going to hit the other one with the Nolan oil as well. Again, just yeah. Luckily, I caught it before we did all that because that's just just a duplication of effort, right? We would have had to hit it again with the Nolan oil after we had just already done it. So basically anything that looks like it's some sort of grass thing. One thing I might do later is I might actually add some static grass to these models as well, which would be kind of cool, I think. Coming out of these green areas, this mossy kind of green stuff growing on the rocks. At least that's what I interpret it to be. I mean, it may not, they may not have meant for it to be that. They may have meant for it to have been like rocky, um, you know, like gray, rocky, whatever thing. And I, I could probably do that on the other one as well. But I think I like the green better because it just makes it more interesting if it's moss. Although I don't know that moss could grow in a dark cave. It probably needs some light. So I guess that's a conflict, but hey, whatever. It's a fantasy world, right? Oh, I guess we have a skull on the back here we also missed. Which I need to hit with white. Man, there's all kinds of just little details I'm, I'm seeing here as I, as I work with this model. Yeah, that's 
think it does look pretty good, but at the same time, maybe it was maybe it, maybe it darkened it a little bit too much. But overall, I'm happy with it. Oh, I still need to hit it with some silver flex, don't I? This might be all I do tonight, is just work on these archways. that's another thing I might still buy from Citadel is because they seem to have good metallics and I don't know that we can get that with like Valero
know if I want to start that whole process one more time tonight. Although I suppose I don't have that many colors to do on the rest of these, but... stuff to do. I think it might be best to just back it up, but I feel pretty good about these arches. 